Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're looking at items from The Legend of Zelda that take the most effort and patience to unlock. However, we won't be including any pieces of heart, nor any items from spin-off games. But before we get into it, we publish new content all week long. So be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Fourth Bottle, The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. Ocarina of Time features four empty bottles to let Link carry around potions and other useful things. While the first three are easy to get, the fourth certainly isn't. There are ten big Poes hidden around Hyrule Field. As soon as one appears, you'll have to give chase on Epona and shoot the ghost down before it vanishes. These can be a pretty big pain considering the Poes flee on set paths and can disappear extremely quickly. By killing them all, collecting their souls, and taking them to the Poe Collector in Hyrule Castle Town, you'll earn the fourth bottle. But honestly, unless you're going for a 100% run, you may as well just stick to three and save yourself the hassle. The Hylian Shield, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. If you want to earn Link's classic shield and Skyward Sword, you better be prepared to fight for it. After meeting the dragon Lanayru, players can challenge themselves to a boss rush mode. While you can choose what boss you start with, every other one will be randomized. Each fight also only gives you access to the items you would have had when encountering the boss for the first time in the story. And you can't take any bottled items like potions or fairies with you, making it a bit harder to heal. Although there are 12 possible rounds to get through, Link is given the Hylian Shield after beating 8 of them. Still, that many bosses in a row can prove tough. The Last Figurine, The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker. After reaching the Forest Haven in Wind Waker, players can take on one of the longest side quests in Zelda history. In the Nintendo Gallery, Link can bring Karlov a picture of any character or enemy from the game to have him craft a figurine. What makes this time-consuming, other than tracking everyone down, are Karlov's rules. The pictures have to be colored, requiring a separate side quest, and the subject has to be centered and looking at the camera, or else he won't accept it, which is pretty hard with certain enemies and bosses. This was made much easier in the HD remake, which started with the color camera, let you save 10 pictures instead of 3, and marked each successful picture so you didn't waste any time. But finishing it in the original to earn the final figurine of Link and the King of Red Lions was a major commitment. Ice Arrows, The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. Most Zelda games give Link elemental arrows through the main story, but the same can't be said of Ocarina of Time. In order to earn the ice arrows, you have to make it through the optional Gerudo training ground. This is a series of locked, connected rooms in which Link must defeat enemies, overcome obstacles and hazards, or both to earn another key. It also uses most of the items found in the main dungeons, making each room varied. Thankfully, there are enough keys so that you don't worry about your starting direction, but some of the rooms are actually pretty tough, especially those that give you a time limit to accomplish their goal. <laughs> Master Cycle Zero, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild.
The Champion's Ballad DLC for Breath of the Wild truly brought the pain, including brutal combat challenges to increase the power of the Master Sword. It also let players obtain a new item in the Master Cycle Zero, which naturally took a lot of effort to unlock. The Story DLC saw Link complete 16 new shrines, four for each champion, and defeat a more challenging version of their area's boss, which also limited what items you had access to. You then had to complete a final trial, which ended in a fight against the surprisingly formidable Monk Mazkoshia, one of the toughest fights in the series with four varied phases. <laughs> Your reward was a motorcycle, which was actually a ton of fun to take across Hyrule. Swordsman's Scrolls, The Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks. Like many other games in the series, Spirit Tracks features a couple of collectible side quests, both of which can test your willingness to make it to the end. Link is given a journal by Nico, which he can fill up with stamps on his travels. Stamp stations, of which there are 20, can be found in noteworthy areas, from villages to dungeons, and some are more well hidden than others. However, the more annoying quest is that of Rabbitland Rescue. Link must find and capture 50 rabbits hidden in the overworld, some of which can only be found by completing other quests. Both get you a Swordsman's Scroll, the one from the Stamp quest gives Link a great spin attack, while finishing the Rabbitland quest lets him shoot beams from his sword. Majora's Mask, The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. Majora's Mask was added as a highly useful item in the DLC for Breath of the Wild, letting Link approach most enemies without them attacking. For Tears of the Kingdom, though, Nintendo decided to test our combat prowess to make sure we were worthy. In the sequel, the mask is found in the depths, directly beneath the Colosseum ruins on the surface. Except, in order to get it, you have to defeat five gloom-covered Lynels in a row, increasing in difficulty with the last one being an armored silver Lynel. That would be hard normally, but the gloom affliction puts you even more on edge, especially if you haven't earned enough hearts or found better armor at this point. The Extravagant Bridal and Saddle, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. The horse riding minigames in Breath of the Wild are recipes for absolute fury. Trying to earn the knight's bridle and saddle from the mounted archery camp is definitely frustrating, yet hitting targets from horseback is surprisingly not as bad as trying to make it through Highland Stables' obstacle course. Players must spend 20 rupees to leap over 10 hurdles, which are spread out in a nearby plane, within a certain time limit to get the rewards. Finishing under a minute and 30 seconds gets you the extravagant bridle, while finishing under a minute and 15 seconds gets you the saddle. What sounds simple on paper is infuriating in practice. The horses are harder to control when going fast, while going too slow or just being off by a hair from the center will cause them not to jump over the hurdle. <laughs> the hammer. Zelda 2: The Adventure of Link. Everything else on our list is completely optional, thankfully, but the hammer in Zelda 2 is required to beat the game, and it's a complete nightmare to find. Link can pick it up on Death Mountain, by far the most complex and frustrating iteration of the famous location. What makes getting the hammer so maddening is that it's found at the end of a huge maze, filled with stronger enemies than anything you will have seen up until this point. 
and since you can venture here relatively early in the game, it has a reputation for being a huge difficulty spike. Making it through this without help from the internet, or tips from Nintendo Power back in the day, was a major challenge. Light Ring L2, The Legend of Zelda, Oracle of Ages. Getting everything in Oracle of Ages is one of the most difficult things to do in any Zelda game. And that's because of the inclusion of rings. This specific ring can only be earned in a minigame, a shooting gallery found in Lena Village. Players must score at least 350 points to earn a ring as their prize. But the problem is that there's no way of knowing if it's the Light Ring L2 or some other ring until you get it appraised. This is the only way to earn this item, but it has less than a 5% chance of being the correct one. It's an upgrade of the previous L1 version and lets Link fire sword beams while still missing up to three hearts. But that benefit hardly seems worth the effort. Hestu's Gift, The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. In Breath of the Wild, players could collect 900 Korok Seeds to fully max out their inventory space, and receive the hilariously underwhelming reward of Hestu's Gift. Nintendo made things a bit more challenging in Tears of the Kingdom, with 1,000 Seeds to collect this time. Quite frankly, that's ridiculous. There's a little more variety, especially with how you can build different vehicles to help some of them reach their friends, but that variety does add to the difficulty. Still, it's the sheer amount of time and searching for these little guys that makes the quest hard. All for the same useless item you got in the first game. Big Goron Sword, The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. Adult Link's trading quest in Ocarina of Time is famous now, considering how beloved the game is and how it leads to the intensely powerful Big Goron Sword. But playing through it without knowing the order, what you're meant to do, is pretty obscure. It starts in Kakariko Village, where the Cuckoo Lady gives Link an egg to wake up a heavy sleeper. Easy stuff. However, it isn't long before which person comes next or where they can be found will be beyond you. Things grow even harder with certain items that come with a time limit, as you'll have to rush across the kingdom since warping won't work. The weapon is certainly worth getting, but there's no denying this stressed us out back in the day. Hero's Charm the Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker HD. When it comes to earning the Hero's Charm, it's a lot harder in the HD version than the GameCube one. In the original, Windfall Island teacher, Mrs. Marie, gives it to Link after he gives her 40 joy pendants. In the HD remaster, it's found at the end of the Savage Labyrinth. The fact that Joy is used for one method and Savage used for the other really sums up the difficulty spike. While it's required you complete 30 floors of progressively tougher monsters for the story, you have to conquer 20 more to earn this prize. It lets Link see the health bars of all enemies, a nice benefit, but it definitely takes a lot of effort from the player. Tycoon Wallet, The Legend of Zelda, Skyward Sword. <laughs> We're grateful Nintendo has seemingly done away with the wallet size system because some of them take a lot of work to unlock. The Tycoon Wallet from Skyward Sword can hold up to 9,000 rupees, which is far more than you would ever need by the time you're able to get it. 
It's the final prize in the side quest of Batro, a monster living in Skyloft who wants to be human. Scattered about on some sky islands, though more commonly earned in other side quests, are gratitude crystals, of which Batro needs all 80 before he can transform and therefore cough up the wallet. Although none of these quests are too challenging, some are well hidden, and it's still a tremendous amount of work. Super Net, The Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds Similar to Wind Waker's Savage Labyrinth, the treacherous tower from A Link Between Worlds has you work through floors of increasingly stronger enemies. Only here, it's divided into three levels of difficulty and each one must be beaten to unlock the next. The advanced level comes with a staggering 50 floors and costs 300 rupees to enter. After beating it, you'll be gifted the Super Lamp. But in order to get the Super Net, which is really just the normal net with the ability to damage enemies, you have to beat it a second time. As if the first time wasn't difficult enough, that's also a lot of dedication with no health drops for something you don't really need. Hero of the Wild set and Ancient Heroes Aspect, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Although they're different rewards from different games, the Hero of the Wild set and the Ancient Heroes aspect are earned in basically the same way. But which one you find more challenging to get depends on your skill as a player. The Hero of the Wild set is given to you by the Sheikah Monks, after Link has completed all 120 shrines in Breath of the Wild. And the Ancient Heroes aspect is earned after completing the 152 shrines in Tears of the Kingdom. Granted, some shrines are obviously harder than others, but because each of these rewards is locked behind something that requires a ton of time searching for and beating, they're some of the hardest rewards to earn in Zelda. The Fierce Deity Mask the Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask. There are a few masks in Majora's Mask that are pretty challenging to unlock. For example, the couple's mask is earned after one of the hardest, longest side quests in Zelda history. Of course, that means the mask you only get from earning all the rest has to take the cake. Once Link makes it to the final section, he can trade away the 20 minor masks to the four children running around the tree, and then play some very intense hide-and-seek. Only then will the child sitting under the tree gift him with the Fierce Deity Mask. It grants him the ability to make any boss, including the final one, seem like nothing in comparison, so it's more than worth getting. Colossal Wallet, The Legend of Zelda, Twilight Princess HD. Here we have two staples of the past Zelda era, another big wallet, and a combat dungeon. Only in the HD version of Twilight Princess can you get the Colossal Wallet, which can hold 9,999 rupees. By scanning this remaster's Wolf Link amiibo, you could access the Cave of Shadows, a 40-floor dungeon like those before it, but which had to be played as Link's alternate form. Not having access to your full inventory certainly makes things tougher. However, you have to gain wallets in order of increasing capacity. If you haven't found the 24 golden bugs hidden about Hyrule for Agatha's side quest, you'll get the next largest wallet. If you want the colossal one, you have to do both. Mirror Shield, 
The Legend of Zelda, The Minish Cap. The Mirror Shield is usually earned late game, but Minish Cap took it a step further. For starters, you have to have already beaten the final boss. For another, it takes a series of obscure, hidden kinstone fusions to pull off. You start by fusing with one of the farmers in Eastern Hills, which causes a Goron digging by Lon Lon Ranch to break into a cave. In order to get him help, you have to fuse with five seemingly ordinary walls hidden in different caves. Doing all of that only gets you the last empty bottle. But afterward, fusing with one of the Gorons causes Big Goron to pop up in Vale Falls. After Link gives him his shield and waits 20 minutes, you finally get your just reward. The Bomber's Ring, The Legend of Zelda, Oracle of Ages. Zelda has some annoying minigames, but the Goron dancing from Oracle of Ages is pretty close to the top. Getting the rhythm right from the little bleeps and bloops is surprisingly challenging. You can find it in the present and the past, but the older era has the Bomber's Ring, which lets Link place two bombs at once. There are three skill levels to choose from, Platinum being the hardest. That means getting every single note and pause perfect in some rather drawn out sequences. You'll get a magic ring for your troubles, but there's only a chance it will be the Bomber's Ring. It's more than likely you'll walk out of there with a ring you can find elsewhere. But this is the only way you can earn this prize. What item from The Legend of Zelda gave you the hardest time? Share your thoughts in the comments, and be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays for more great gaming videos every day.